Which what you like which one the, the PBC oh, piping? BBC 157. I don't know what this thing yeah, is. Yeah, it's a peptide. Yeah, it, it's, of course, it it's a peptide. Yeah, it, it heals people I know with what, injuries. A peptide? What is a peptide? <laughs> Some say BPC-157 is a miracle peptide. Rapid wound healing, gut repair, maybe even neuroprotective components. But others take it and feel noticeably worse. Mood changes, fatigue, anxiety, even brain fog. Why? That's the question today. Because while BPC-157 has promising preclinical data that we entirely analyzed in a 20-page educational guide, wink wink, there's a growing body of people, especially in forums like Reddit, even here in the YouTube comments, saying it's made them feel off. So let's unpack some possible reasons, starting with the obvious one. Not all BPC-157 is created equal. Like many peptides, BPC-157 exists in a legal gray zone. Most users aren't getting pharmaceutical grade material, and that's because from a legally regulated standpoint, it doesn't exist. So, as people have to, they're buying it from research chemical sites that may not test for impurities, endotoxins, or even proper peptide identity. And there are virtually no consequences besides poor word-of-mouth referrals if a company were to fudge their data. You see it all the time online, peptide suppliers confronted by the masses and unable to back up their claims. In some cases, third-party testing has shown mislabeled batches or incomplete synthesis. If the source is impure, or worse, contaminated, that could explain a lot of the reported side effects, from nausea and vomiting, to headaches, to heightened immune responses, or severe injection site reactions, or even worse. Nearly any side effect could theoretically be attributed to the nebulous gray market within which these peptide suppliers exist. But let's imagine here that we're using the real thing. Let's get into the biology a bit, which is understandably affected by the fact that when you attempt to translate isolated preclinical rodent data to human effects, it's akin to trying to fly a 747 just because you played Microsoft Flight Simulator as a kid. That's why what drives widespread BPC-157 use as much if not more than the research that exists out there does, it's the anecdote. Some people, especially those with profound influence, love it, and aren't afraid to share it. However, one under-discussed topic that we've done a whole video on in the past is the relationship between BPC-157 and mood, one that's complex and not fully understood, which is reasonable given the growing body of literature on neurotransmitters and their interactions with neurochemistry in general. However, unlike some other medications out there that influence mood in one way or another, BPC's neuropsychiatric mechanism of action is essentially largely unknown. What we can grasp is that the peptide in some way or another modulates serotonergic and dopaminergic interactions. It may also interplay within other neurotransmitter systems like glutamate, GABA, epinephrine and norepinephrine, acetylcholine, and nitric oxide. And it might even counter neurological disturbances like alcohol intoxication for one. But what's worth noting is that mood is nuanced. It's ever complex and in populations of people on very well-studied psychoactive medications, it's still not fully understood. So we've got a compound that interacts within the billion lane highway that is your neural circuitry. We don't know how it works, but we know it somehow affects the speed of the traffic. This is the perfect storm for unpredictable effects on mood and how you feel. For example, while BPC-157, as seen in rodent studies, may modulate serotonin synthesis, it's a fine balance of serotonin levels in conjunction with other neurotransmitters that govern mood. Similarly, its interaction with the dopaminergic system, which is critical for reward and pleasure, could potentially contribute to anhedonia, the reduced ability to experience pleasure if dopaminergic tone is disrupted in one way or another. Furthermore, BPC-157's influence on the nitric oxide system and its interactions with other neurotransmitters may also contribute to these adverse effects by disrupting the delicate balance that's required for normal mood regulation leading to emotional blunting. This series of unknown interactions could predispose users to a variety of mood changes, whether anxiety, fatigue, or in the context of dopamine dysregulation, even restlessness. And although BPC-157 is oftentimes intended for gastrointestinal benefit, it surprisingly has the inverse or opposite effect on some. 
nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, symptoms that could very well be influenced by BPC-157's modulation of nitric oxide, serotonin, and acetylcholine. As we mentioned, BPC-157 has shown to activate endothelial nitric oxide synthase, leading to increased nitric oxide production. This results in vasodilation, widening of blood vessels, and enhanced blood flow to the gastrointestinal tract. And while potentially therapeutic in some contexts, this nitric oxide-driven smooth muscle relaxation and increased motility could cause diarrhea in certain individuals. Additionally, as we said before, the peptide interacts with neurotransmitter systems like serotonin and acetylcholine, both of which are deeply involved in gut function. Serotonin is a key modulator of motility and secretion. Shifts in its signaling can easily lead to diarrhea or dysmotility. Similarly, acetylcholine is involved in stimulating peristalsis, the unconscious contraction of muscles of the intestines that propel digested food along, and its modulation by PPC-157 could increase intestinal activity. And if you're wondering, yeah, the nitric oxide-mediated vasodilation is also implicated in headaches. Finally, in rodent research, BPC has shown the ability to modulate mast cell activity and influence their degranulation. Mast cells are critical components of the immune system involved in the release of various inflammatory mediators like histamine, heparin, and cytokines when triggered. Histamine release can cause symptoms like itching, flushing, and gastrointestinal disturbances, including diarrhea. The additional release of cytokines or prostaglandins can lead to systemic inflammation, potentially manifesting as fatigue or headaches or even allergic-like symptoms. So although unconfirmed in humans, as is all research essentially with BPC-157, we could reasonably theorize that the peptide's interaction with mast cells and its ability to modulate the release of their contents can contribute to potential side effects both locally in the gut and systemically through inflammatory responses. So here's an overview of some of the common symptoms associated with BPC-157 use. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It's the best way to help a small peptide YouTuber out. If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, the link to the Patreon will be down in the description below. There we have some member-only videos, early releases, free materials, and special requests. And additionally, the link to the BPC-157 20-page educational guide, which we alluded to earlier, will be in the description too. But most importantly, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Take care. See ya. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.